dear friends, our subject is manufacturing processes 2 and we are continuing module 4 that is general purpose machine tools and our today's topic lecture topic is forces developing and acting in machine tools. You know that during machining lot of forces develop due to cutting action, friction, dead weight, inertia etcetera and these forces are transmitted and act in different parts of the machine fixture tool work system. Now, what is the content? What are the contents of this lecture? Sources and pattern of forces that develop in machine tools. Next, effects of the forces on machine tools and their operations functions. Next, purposes of force analysis in machine tools. And fourth, actual forces acting in machine tools, display of the forces acting in machine tools. Now, come to first sources and types of forces, sources and types of the forces acting in different machine tools. We are considering general purpose machine tools. Now, as I said that the sources may be machining number 1, then dead weight, inertia, friction and so on. Let us start with the machining forces which originate at the cutting point that is at the tool job cutting point, junction point and these forces can be continuous type that is in continuous type machining like turning, boring, drilling this force will be continuous without any fluctuation and all these things. So, in turning, drilling, boring actually so here you see let me show you suppose this is the tool and this is the job. Okay. Now, the forces on the tool will develop in the direction of velocity vector that is the tangential. So, this is called P z, this is tangential. Actually force that develops only one force at the cutting point that is resolved into three components in x and y and z direction for convenience of understanding, analysis, design and various purposes. So, this is the major component P z that is called the major component or main component also, also called power component. Then the axial force, this force acts in this direction along the axis of the work this is called P x. Another transverse force normal to this P y. Now, these are the forces P x, P y, P z which has got only one resultant force say R and these are acting on the tool. Similarly, as a reaction or rather R is reaction as action on the job the force will act in this direction which will also have similar type of components say P z, P x and P y on the job and on the tool P z, P x and P y. Now, come to drilling. In drilling, say this is the drill bit okay, and this is the work piece in which some hole is made. This is also a continuous process, but here one torque is developed on the tool as well as on the job torque and a thrust force also develops one force in the axial direction called thrust force which is very large in drilling and one force acts in the opposite direction as a reaction into the tool. So, these are the force, two forces torque and thrust develop in drilling, boring, counter boring and similar work. So, what you produce torque and thrust. Now, 
as just now we described all the forces that is under continuous type machining like turning, drilling, boring where the force do not fluctuate. But you know that in machine tools like shaping, planing, slotting, there is an impact. When the cutting tool just contacts the job at that point at high speed, there is a contact or impact. This impact creates intensive force and its effects. This is called impact type machining or impact type force in shaping, planing and slotting. Now, intermittent type then the type milling where suppose a milling this is the milling cutter which has got number of cutting edges and this is the work piece. So, it goes like this strips are removed layer by layer as a result the cutting force with time cutting force with time it fluctuates this is the force. Okay. So, this is called due to intermittent cutting is a dynamic force or what is called fluctuating force develops for example, in milling, hobbying and similar process. So, these three conditions have to be remembered. Next is gravitational forces that is because of the weight, weight of what? Dead weight of the job and machine parts. Now, sometimes the job becomes so large is so large that its weight is, re is really considerable that acts on the supports, uh, centers, jigs, fixtures and so on and it has to be considered for force analysis. Not only dead weight of the job, but dead weight of the machine parts, large machine parts like say tool work holding devices. For example, chucks, uh, vices and so on, collets, head stock and tail stock itself, they are heavy and they rest on the table. So, the entire force act on the table and through the table on the foundation and so on. So, these are to be considered weight of the saddle, weight of the bed, weight of the table, column, overarm or milling machine, shaping machine. These are the things, heavy things which are heavy, they are dead weight have also to be considered because they are distributed over the different parts of the machine and foundation. There may be some additional fixtures and attachments which may be also quite heavy and their weights have to be taken into account. Next is frictional forces. Whenever there is a sliding, suppose the saddle the saddle heavy saddle under the cutting force you know slides over the lathe bed okay, and under the heavy load. So, there will be lot of friction force, this friction force will cause lot of effects and will be transmitted to other components also. Next is inertia force, now inertia force in say reciprocating machine, the cutting tool is the ram or shaping machine or the table of the planing machine, the table work table of the grinding machine, they move like this, the velocity is like this velocity profile. So, they are more or less constant at the middle part, but at the ends either there will be acceleration or retardation. Because of this retardation and acceleration multiplied by the mass which is travelling which will, which will cause lot of inertia force that may be also large and has to be taken into account. Due to acceleration, dislation of heavy moving parts, for example, saddles, tables of planing machine, grinding machine, milling machine, ram of shaping machine, turret slide in turret lathe and so on. Now, sometimes the centrifugal forces are also become the source of uh, forces acting in the machine tool and they develop due to high speed rotation of eccentric masses. Now, if there is a there are lot of rotary mass, the job rotates, the spindle rotates, the gear rotates, the clutch rotates and if there be eccentric mass and that rotates eccentrically at high speed, lot of centrifugal force will develop and that will also act on different parts of the machine tools. Sometimes this spindle, this shaft or spindle may be perfectly all right concentric, but because of the misalignment they may rotate eccentrically they may rotate eccentrically. 
or the spindle is like this the drill rotates perfectly all right but the spindle may rotate eccentrically all these things will create centrifugal force which sometimes becomes quite considerable in size now come to so we have been acquainted with the forces that develop and act in machine tools conventional now why we are taking interest what the effects of the forces that develop and act in machine tools let us examine power and energy consumption is related to the cutting force force into cutting force into that is pj into cutting velocity is a power and that into time is the energy consumption so more force means more energy more power consumption it has to be economized cutting temperature and its detrimental effects now this energy mechanical energy that is expended through the forces is mostly converted to heat that raises the temperature of cutting tool job and other parts also and this temperature is detrimental and may cause lot of problems so the force cause this effects because of large force or fluctuating force there may be vibration and chatter in the machine tool which is very detrimental and this has to be controlled this has to be understood measured checked and so on due to the force elastic deflection and thermoelastic deformation of parts take place now here is a rod long rod now when it is subject to a load force it will undergo bending okay it will undergo bending so because of the bending the accuracy of the product will be lost beside that because of thermoelastic deformation either contraction or expansion because of me mechanically or thermally the accuracy will be also lost so the tolerance will be not maintained rapid wear and tear of tools and other sliding surfaces so the sliding or friction force is proportional to the forces that develop at the cutting point and on the slides and guides so if lot of wear and tear take place the quality of the machine will fall lot of noise and inconveniences are created by the forces chances of premature failure if the force is really very large then there are chances of premature failure of the machine fixture that is chocks vices tool cutting tool tool holder etc and the workpiece and its holders system due to excessive stresses because because of the forces stresses will develop and then thermal damage wear fatigue resonance will occur and may cause failure into the machine fixture tool or system and all these are caused by the forces that develop into the machine tool if you don't use the machine tool there is no force there is no problem but if you use it then there will be forces and all the forces will be taken care of otherwise if they are too large may cause so many problems now <coughs> purposes of force analysis why should we learn force distribution force development force acting effects of the force and all these things how how can we utilize this knowledge what for we should learn the magnitude direction location pattern of the forces etc if we know the all the the look the magnitude direction location of all the forces acting in the develop and act in the machine tool that will enable us or you estimate power requirement how much power or energy will be required to machine that will be determined from the force and once you know the power requirement you can select the motors so it is a part of the design now design the machine fixture tool work system now what is mean by design design means selection of the material of the component and the dimensions determination of the dimensions such that suppose this is a machine element it has to be designed what is mean by design design means selection of this material and dimensions such that this component will not fail under the due to stresses caused by the forces during function that is force will develop due to the force stress will develop and we have to see that that stress does not cause failure that is not exceeding the strength of the material for the body so the force analysis has to be carried out for the purpose of design not only machine fixture tool or system design machine tool foundation 
that also requires knowledge of the forces. Evaluate process capability of machine tools. Process capability means ability to hold the dimensional accuracy or minimize or control the dimensional deviation. Now, the dimensional deviation or inaccuracy is caused by force and the lack of rigidity of the machine tool. Whatever be the rigidity, if the force is nil, there is no deformation, no problem. So, we must know how much force is acting that multiplied by the compliance will give you the dimensional deviations and we have to check whether that is within tolerance or not. Now, assess machinability characteristics. Machinability, what is machinability? Ease of machining. What is easy is that is ease is just by cutting for magnitude of cutting force. If the cutting force is large, machinability is poor. If cutting force is less, machinability is good, but at the not at the cost of productivity. For same productivity, if we can reduce the cutting force, then we can say that machinability has improved. And machinability is characterized by temperature, tool wear, tool life, tool life, surface tension, and so on. But the main criteria by which machinability is judged is magnitude of the forces. So, we should know the forces and their distribution. Determine role of various machining parameters and optimize. If we optimize or reduce the cutting force, we must know what are the role of variation of the different parameters on the forces. So, that we can control the parameters and get lesser force or better distribution, favorable distribution of the forces to make design easier and better and performance of the machine tool improved. Comprehend need and way of improvement in design. Now, time to time whatever we do, we have to try to improve the design of the machine tool, its performance, its safety, service life, machine tool or, or the machine etcetera, all of which depend upon the magnitude, pattern, distribution of the cutting forces. So, if we know all these things, then we can think of how to improve these aspects of machine tools. Now, let us come to real analysis, analysis of forces acting during machining in different general purpose machine tools. We have chosen four machine tools, center lathes, drilling machines, shaping and planing machines, milling machines. Now, friend, if we understand, if you or all of us understand the analysis of force or pattern of distribution, sources of distribution uh, of the forces and uh, then the methodology, then we can extrapolate this knowledge and do the force analysis for other types of machine tools easily. So, these are the basic machine tools, which fundamental machine tools, we should learn about that. Now, again forces, I already told that forces develop in machine fixture tool or system for various causes and reasons like machining forces, that is cutting forces, friction forces, inertia forces, dead weights and so on, but mainly the cutting force, that is the major forces. Okay. So, but mainly due to the cutting forces. Now, since time and space is limited, onward we shall discuss only the cutting forces and their transmission to different machine components will be discussed. Other forces will not be discussed onward that you can do it easily later on. Now, let us start with center lathe, forces acting in center lathes. Now, this looks, this shows a center lathe. This is the job workpiece, a straight turning this is the cutting tool, the job is held in between the head stock center, tail stock center all right. and here you can see due to the cutting process at this point at a distance of x say from the tail stock and total length of the job is L w. Now, here the main force that act on the job during machining is this one, this is called P z tangential one is radial transverse force P y, which is responsible for vibration, dimensional deviation and so on. Another force axial P x force. So, these three forces actually there is only one force, which is resolved into three components for convenience of all purposes. So, P z, P y, P x out of which P z is the largest, P y is the medium and P x is the smallest, but 
on the tool as a reaction as a reaction on the tool the force of pj will be acting in this direction pj will be acting in this direction on the tool py in this direction px in this direction their direction magnitude is same but the sense are different if it is in this direction on the tool will be opposite direction so all these forces acting on the job and the tool will now be transmitted to the head stock to the tail stock through the head stock to the bed from tail stock to the bed and again the cutting tool which receives the forces is resting on the tool holder so tool holder will be also subjected to the same px by pj the tool holder is mounted on the tool post so the tool post will be also subject to same forces then tool post on the compound slide cross slide saddle carriage all of them will be subjected to forces now the saddle will be moving along the bed so when the saddle receives all the forces that will be again transmitted to the bed so the bed receives forces through the tail stock head stock through the tail stock and through the saddle all these forces and the forces that received by the bed will be again transmitted to the foundation so this is how the forces are developed at the cutting point and distributed all the major parts in the way this will be shown and discussed now it will be discussed and these forces will help us design of the components of different um, major elements of the machine tool now let us see the forces acting at the head stock hs and tail stock centers how this will be done let us take a job a rod okay and this is getting done held in the tail stock center and here is the head stock center and suppose at a distance x from the tail stock end there is a cutting tool now due to the cutting tool i am drawing the same figure what will happen on the job a force will act this is pj p z a transverse force will work p y and one p x okay now due to this force act develop on the job that will be transmitted to the head stock center and tail stock center what will happen at the head head stock center this will be created here the force one and the force will act in this direction and the force will act in this direction suppose this is called pjh head stock pyh head stock and this is pxh similarly at this point at the tail stock center a force will be developed that is pjt t for tail stock 1 py tail stock and px tail stock all right now how much will be the force how shall we design suppose the length of the job is lw now remember when we hold the job we apply an additional force here for tightening the job isn't it so that acts in this direction this direction suppose this is called k and the job is heavy so it has got its own weight and suppose that weight is w which is acting suppose at the center now determine these three forces pjh pyh and pxh acting at the head stock center how will you do that very simple say pjh pjh will be how much take moment so this is the this is the source of the forces that will be distributed in head stock and tail stock center now you are now taking pj this pj take moment about this point what is the moment about this point pj pj into x that will be divided by this length lw so this is the force pj h which you can determine taking moment about this point so pj into x is the moment divided by 
this distance moment r. Now, there will be another force this w, this w will be distributed suppose equally on the head stroke and tail stroke center and this will act in the downward direction. So, this will be w by 2 minus. Similarly, p y h, p y h similar to p y this p y multiplied by x moment arm divided by total length l w. Now, here this p x force that is acting here that is not acting through the center, but this force acts at the periphery. So, this force acting in this direction multiplied by the arm gives a moment. So, p x into d diameter workpiece diameter by 2 divided by L w. So, these are the forces acting. Now, what is p x h? p x h will be equal to p x this p x plus this tightening force k plus k. So, this is how the forces have been determined at the center. Now, similarly find out the forces this forces p z sorry let, let us clear it. This is the job and this is the tail stock. Now, these are the forces we showed. Suppose this is P z, P z and this is P y and this is P x. We have to determine now the forces this P j t, P y t and P x t and this distance is x and the total length of the job is L w. Exactly in the same way here P j t will be equal to you take the moment about this head stock center. So, P j into what is this distance L w minus x this is L w minus x L w minus x by L w again the half of the weight minus w by 2. Similarly, p y t will be equal to p y same factor minus p x into d w by 2 l w and but p x t will be equal to k minus p x because p x is acting in this direction. So, this will be this k minus p x. So, friend this is how these forces at the centers can be determined. Now, come to forces acting on head stock and tail stock and bed. Now, here first you show suppose this is the head stock. This is the center and this is the job and this is the bearings and there are two bolts by which this head stock is fitted or clamped on the bed. Okay. Now, what we have to do now? What we have seen that at this point the forces act P z h then P y 
h and p x h. Now, we have to determine the forces acting on the headstock body. This headstock body, what are the forces acting? Now, these forces will be transmitted to the spindle. Now, the spindle will be loaded and the spindle from the spindle, the force will be transmitted to the body through the housing. Now, what will the distribution? Distribution will be one force here, say Z 1 h 1, let us point to 1, consider 1 and at this point, this will be z 2 and y 2, these two, they are the forces acting. Now, suppose this distance is m and this distance is m prime. Okay. Now, you can determine all these forces z 1, z 2. For example, say z 1 is how much? z 1, you take the moment about this point. So, this force p z h into this distance m plus m prime divided by this distance. This is p z, z 1. What is z 2? z 2 will be, you take moment about this point p z h that this force into this distance m prime divided by this distance. Yeah. So, in this way you can determine y 1, this y, y 1 and y 2. Now, the question is, now the force will be transmitted to the bed. How this will be transmitted? This force is going up. So, through the bolt, the bed will receive a force acting in this direction. And on this side, the force will be transmitted to the bed in this direction. So, from these bolts or the junction from the headstock, the, this will receive force like this and also these forces will come to this. And as a reaction, this force is acting on the bed. Now, on this headstock, the reaction force will be this reaction force, this reaction force, just opposite this reaction force and this reaction force. So, the headstock will be subjected to these forces and the bed will be subjected to by the red force, these forces. Now, beside these two forces, which can be determined, another force will develop because of this P x H. This P x H will cause you know some force in this direction, additional force in this direction. So, the red force plus this force together will be acting on the lathe bed in this direction. And similarly, one additional force will act in this direction. Now, this force will be equal to how much? This will be equal to P x into the height, height divided by uh, this distance m. So, this additional force will come here and here. So, you can see what are the forces that will be acting at the center at this, at this points on the lathe bed. One force in this direction due to z 1, one force in this direction because of z 2 and then this additional force this one and this one because of p x. Right. Now, similar to force acting on the tail stock. In the tail stock side, suppose this is the tail stock center. and this tail stock is resting on the lathe bed okay. and this is the center, here is a bolt by which it is clamped through here and at the center what are the forces acting we determined? These forces were P z t P y t for tail stock and P x t. Now, this and suppose what are the forces that will be acting? This force will try to 
lift this uh, lift this tail stock, but this will be held tight by the bolt. So, the here the tail stock will receive a force downward and the lathe bed will receive a force upward. At this end, this will try to give a moment like this. So, this end through this end the lathe bed will get a force in this direction and as a reaction on the tail stock the force will act in this direction. Similarly, this P y will cause forces on the lathe bed this way. Uh, no, lathe on the lathe bed in the this way and on the tail stock on the tail stock this one. At this point on the tail stock this force and in the head stock uh, sorry in the lathe bed in this direction. Since we know this distance suppose this is n prime and this is n we can determine all the forces. So, to determine the forces at different points what we need the magnitude of the force originated through cutting action and then the configuration and dimension of the machines and machine parts. Now, forces acting on the bed under the saddle. Now, this is the workpiece again come to the workpiece. Now, this is slightly uh, you know isometric view is shown and this is the cutting tool here. Now, on the cutting tool as I told you that the cutting tool is mounted on the tool post that is tool rest uh, tool holder then tool post then compound slide then cross slides and from cross slide to the saddle and from saddle the force comes onto the bed and so the bed re receives forces that is imparted to the tool also. Now, you remember that actually in way on the work piece the forces that were developed this was P z, this was P y and this was P x on the work piece. What are the forces on the tool on the cutting tool? This is P z, this is P x and this is P y just in the opposite direction, but magnitude and other way it is same. Now, the saddle suppose the saddle is resting on that this is the lathe bed okay? on the lathe bed is resting this is the indicates the area of contact the apparent area of contact between the saddle on the bed. Now, we assume that this contact is concentrated at four points A, B, C, D all the forces are concentrated on these four points then what will happen. Now, if you see from side this is the work piece and this is the cutting tool here because of that P z will act like this P y and P x perpendicular to the plate this is a D w and this is the lathe bed okay, of width B this is the width of B and this is the diameter of the work piece D w and height of the center is h. Okay. Now, you have to determine the forces. How do you determine this? For example, the most important one is V a. How this much this will be? This will be created by the force P z and P y. P y you create a moment that will induce a force V a in this direction on the bed. This will be equal to P z into this B plus D w diameter of the work is by 2 B plus P y this P y multiplied by the by h height the moment divided by the width of the saddle or B prime say like this this is V a. Now, V c will be similarly you can determine V c and Next is uh, this V D, this V D, this one V D and V B. These two forces will be caused by the force P X, the force P X that is acting in this direction that will create a moment. Because of that moment caused by P X, the V D and V B, V D will be equal to V B and this will be equal to P x into height divided by the length of the saddle that is all simply 
Now, these two forces, how about, uh, what about these two forces, horizontal forces, H D and this one H B. These forces will be caused by the moment, because the P X is acting in this point, at this point, with at this point, with a moment arm this much. So, this will also cause a torque or moment and then this will be this will be how much H D the horizontal force H D is equal to H B that will be equal to P x into the moment arm d by 2 divided by L s. So, this is how all the forces. Now, these forces I have shown these are acting on the lathe bed. What are the forces acting on the saddle? Same force, but in the opposite direction that is all. So, this way we could find that how the forces are originated in the machine tool like central lathe and how they are distributed over the different parts of the machine tool. Now, this will help design of the machine tool and fulfill the other purposes as I already mentioned. Now, come to drilling machine, the forces acting in drilling machine. Now, this diagram shows a radial drilling machine which is largest and most complex amongst all the drilling machines. So, we have chosen a radial drilling machine. In a radial drilling machine, you can, as you can see here that there is a cutting tool drill, this is the drill okay, and this is the work piece which makes hole okay, through our blind hole. So, this is the basic purpose. Now, then what happens? because of the cutting action the drill rotates here this shows that the drill is rotating and moving downward that the feed motion is also there. So, one is rota cutting motion and one is feed motion, one is feed motion the drill down moves downward like this. So, there is a feed motion and there is a rotation like this inside the job. Now, then what happens? within the job a thrust force P x will develop which will be acting vertically downward actually another torque as action on the tool drill the reaction a torque T and a vertical axial force P x. Now, these two forces are the original cutting force. These forces will now be transmitted to all other members throughout the drilling machine and accordingly you have to utilize them. Now, let us have a look how these are distributed. I shall not show you all the forces, but tell you really how it is transmitted and one by one. First, let us consider that the force coming to the job. So, this is the job from the job the forces torque and thrust comes on to the bed. Okay. The bed is grouted on the base. So, all the forces come onto the base and the base is fitted into the foundation. So, this torque and this thrust force are transmitted through the cut job up to the foundation in equal magnitude and direction. These are the forces. Now, what about the now, suppose now then you understand that when you design the foundation, you have to consider these two forces and their distribution through the bolts. Now, come to the other part the force torque and thrust that is transmitted from the cutting tool drill to the spindle, from spindle to the drilling head. This is called drilling head, drilling head, and from drilling head to the arm on which the drilling head, drilling head is mounted and slides and the arm is mounted on the column, this column and how the column is loaded by forces. Let us examine. This torque and thrust will be transmitted to the spindle which is rotating. Now, the torque multiplied by the speed, angular speed will give you the power. So, power consumption can be determined from torque. Now, this force P x and torque you can determine design the spindle. Next is 
this force P x which is very large. I told you earlier if you remember that the thrust force in drilling machine is unusually very large because of unfavorable drilling action, cutting action at the drill point may be say half ton to few tons. Now, drill 4 that x here what will happen? This will come to the spindle into this drilling head. The drilling head is resting on the saddle. This is the if you take this section of this, this is a radial arm, radial arm, this is a section of the radial arm. This is a radial arm. Now, so this force will act on the radial arm. After, let us clean it and now show see that. this force P x will act on this arm. So, the arm will be subjected to a moment like this all right and this will undergo a deflection because of this torque and bending, bending moment and then because of that a spindle may be inclined and this will cause error in the drill hole. Because of this moment the column will also deflect and this radial will deflect further and the spindle will deflect further. This will cause a lot of error or inaccuracy in the hole, in the axis, in the angle and the diameter. So, all these problems will arise. Therefore, if we know the force and the deflection, we can estimate the amount of dimensional inaccuracy or estimate the process capability and we can design accordingly. Now, remember here the saddle the, this this arm this radial arm. Okay. So, this should be radial arm on one side this is the drilling head hanging which is very heavy to balance it another dead weight is mounted. So, this dead weight and this self weight balance, but the entire load is coming onto the bed onto this sorry onto this cantilever beam. Therefore, when you consider the moment which is equal to the force P x multiplied by the radial arm then and since the force gravitational force act downward. So, what we have to do? We have to deduct this dead weight like this dead weights that multiplied by R i is the moment, but there will be lot of bending moment no doubt this is the, the torque on this, but this will be bending moment this much okay. and the same will come onto the column. So, the column will also get the entire load of this one will work downward onto the column. So, the column has to be very uh, rigid and strong. So, this is how all the forces beside that here you see that this force and this dead weight they balance, but what about this this is the axis neutral axis of the arm and this is the force P a. So, there is a gap moment arm. So, this will cause a twist on the this will cause a twist on the arm. This is also to be taken into account while designing or say determining the overall system compliance, extra rigidity and so on. Now, forces acting in shaping machine and planing machine. Planing machine and shaping machines are more or less same. So, let us consider only shaping machine. The shaping machine is very simple. Here we can see that this is the job and this is the cutting tool. Cutting tool moves forward in the cutting stroke. Then what happens? This is the cutting force P z acting on the job. This is P y acting downward on the job and P x acting on the job. Actually, there is only one force like single point cutting that is resolved into P x P y P z as shown acting on the job and job is mounted on the table. So, the table will also receive the same forces, but as a reaction what do you get the reaction? This is a reaction force P z, P y and P y and P x onto the tool. Now, this tool is mounted on this clapper box on this ram. So, all the forces to be transmitted to the ram. Now, this spring force is shown here these are the forces acting on the ram through these two points and at this point. And this force is shown here the blue 
these are the forces acting on the uh, uh, this is acting on the uh, ram as well as the reaction on this column because the forces shown over here that will acting on the ram will create a reaction or same forces on the column this is a column main body now the forces acting b1 and b2 rc1 reaction forces all these forces will be acting on the bed and as a reaction on the column so the column receives force from the through the ram and through the bed coming from the cutting point and this way and now you can say that from this all these forces are transmitted to the foundation through this foundation bolts now shape uh, planing machine planing machine and shaping machines are more or less same as i told you that the magnitude location and direction of the forces acting on the different parts will depend upon the pattern of the source forces and then the configuration and dimension of the machine tool now shaping machine and planing machine are same in in respect of machining principle so px py pz will be exactly same only the forces distributed at the different points will be different because the planing machines are large the dimensions are different otherwise the basic principle are all same last the planing the milling machine what we see in milling machine this is the tool and this is the job from the job they transmitted to these parts this is the job holder vice this is the cross light this is the bed and this is the knee and this is the base and foundation so these are the forces which act on the job from the job to the bed and so bed receives and is a reaction force comes to this so the blue force are coming on to the bed now the forces that are shown over here by red are acting on the arbor now the the reaction the forces will develop here at the arbor and this force will transmit it to the overarm so these are the forces acting on the overarm at three locations and these will be again transmitted to the to this column from here and here from the bed the forces will be also acting from these two points in this direction and in this direction and this direction similarly this will be having some reaction forces on to the blank so from the forces p a p h p y on one side you come to this side and come into this column and from this side also come into the column so you get the forces acting on all parts of the body and you can get the forces acting on all the parts of the milling machine now similarly now this is how you have shown milling machine now again i remind you that we have considered only the cutting forces but there are other forces also like dead weight inertia then friction and so on the basic principle of the force distribution and analysis are more or less same in all machine tools so you have you can do this work onward for any conventional as well as cnc machine tools please practice it and you will do it and you can see books also number of books are there Thank you.